We are Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern here to preview Missouri's football schedule for the coming season. We're doing that with every team in the SEC. Blake, I think this is an interesting schedule, and I will tell you why. We've got a composite that's running across the ticker at the bottom of your screen. We've averaged four sources we like and seen where they rate all the teams in the FBS from 1 to 133. Missouri has got, by my count, eight teams that are in the top 30 of that composite. It's also got some games against teams that are outside that. Those would be Vandy and Memphis that I don't think are give me's the Memphis game at a neutral site and a game with Middle Tennessee State that may be a little bit more intriguing uh, for reasons I'll get into than people perceive. What say you about the Tigers' schedule this coming year? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't feel easy. Um, that's for sure because, you know, like you said, you've got Kansas State as a – a top 20 opponent basically out outside the conference. You got LSU on the schedule. I think it's only the third time those two teams have played since uh, Missouri joined the SEC. Um, you know, you've got a got the road trip to Kentucky. You got to go to Georgia. You got Tennessee on there, of course. You got that game at Arkansas, which who knows? I think you always just kind of, you know, throw your hands in the air about sometimes with those two teams play. Yeah, I mean, you got, you know, South Carolina, as we said, I think a team would be projected to do some, you know, some damage this season, even going to Vanderbilt. You know, it's not a home game in Columbia. Memphis, MTSU, um, I think, you know, very winnable games for Missouri, but I don't know if there's going to be complete pushover. So, I feel like Missouri will be one of those teams we probably label as sort of the widest range, perhaps, of, of possibilities this season. But, and again, we say that, and when we make our game-by-game -game predictions. Uh, may not please Missouri fans, but who knows? We wind up having them six and six again, which kind of seems to be the, you know, kind of that that normal range for this team over the past several years. So, yeah, if you just had to pick a team to follow every year, just out of, it's going to be interesting. You could do a lot worse than Missouri. I think most of its games last year uh, were, were close, win or lose, and, and who knows that that could be the case again this year. But let's dive into the schedule. We'll start in September, South Dakota, the opener on September 2nd. That is South Dakota, not South Dakota State. Big difference. South Dakota last year went 3-8. and eight. This should be a give-me-in-the-win column for Missouri. Again, we'll do game-by-game -game predictions later. But MTSU on September the 9th. Now, Blake, I'll tell you why I think this game is, is mildly interesting. Missouri was supposed to open its season last year with a trip to Middle Tennessee State. I, I think that set up a, a bizarre sequence of a bunch of road games to start the season. Missouri wound up paying $1.3 million to get that one off the schedule and take Louisiana Tech instead. 800000 of that went to MTSU. So I don't know if the Blue Raiders will have a little bit of the grudge factor heading into Columbia on September night. That's a team that can move the ball most years under Coach Rick Stockstill, who's been there 17 years. Uh, they were not as good offensively next year. Missouri should win it, but just an interesting dynamic there. Kansas State, that is a game in Columbia this year. So the Tigers have three straight to start at home. That was sort of – we thought at the time that might be the season record. I, I think that Kansas State won that one, what was it, 40-12. to 12. Uh, Missouri recovered nicely from there, but that, that'll be a tough game against a, a preseason top 20 team. And then a game in Memphis, Blake. Memphis, or excuse me, in St. Louis against Memphis. Uh, that That's a little bit of an odd setup. Uh, but anyway, three straight at home and then a winnable game in state against Memphis to start the schedule here. Yeah, I mean, you don't leave Missouri until September the 30th for that game at Vanderbilt, which again, still, I mean, that's probably not the most intimidating road game on your schedule. So I think that's what kind of stands out the most. But but like you said, I think it's going to be interesting to see what their record is coming out of those first four games because as we talked about, like the Vanderbilt schedule we did, um, Vanderbilt's similar in that they play, you know, sometimes we see in the SEC teams, non-conference opponents sprinkled in somewhere along the way. But, you know, both these teams play their non-conference opponents all up front. And so it'll be interesting to kind of see where these teams stand heading into that first game against each other in SEC play on September the 30th. So it's kind of interesting how the schedules unfold here for those two teams. But yeah, I mean, Kansas state's the one that obviously last year, I think we talked going into it. We really, it was hard to gauge exactly how that game was going to play out. And it swung so far in Kansas state's favor that, you know, kind of changed our perception of Missouri. But I mean, look, we, and I'm going to say this a little bit later on too, but it's like, 
I just feel like Missouri is one of those teams that, um, you know, sometimes they're going to be right there in in those games. I mean, we saw last year right against Georgia, and, um, you know, this is a little bit earlier in the season, but I think this will tell us a lot about kind of where they're at. And I think the Memphis game could tell us a lot because, I mean, that's not a bad Memphis team. I think Athlon had them pick fourth in the American. Um, they've got Seth Hennigan at quarterback. they got two all AEC defenders back. So that's not a bad team. And so that's one of those games that if you're Missouri and you're trying to get to a bowl game, given the rest of your schedule, you got to win. Uh, but who knows? Could we look up in Missouri's 4-0 uh, if they were to pull off an upset against Kansas State? Uh, I think, you know, there, there's a lot of possibilities early on in the schedule. So, Yeah, the Vandy series has been interesting because that's one that seemed to go down to the last five minutes, the last several times those teams have played. Certainly that one did a year ago. LSU, seeing the Tigers come to Columbia will be interesting. Uh, obviously, Missouri will be a decided underdog in that. And then two games that I think could be the swing games of the season, road trip to Kentucky. Missouri lost, if I remember this now, just a, a really weird game based on a maybe a punt return play or something like that. Um, it, it's it's, it's in the back of my head somewhere. And they had yeah, a lot they, of weird did have games. a lot of weird games yeah. last year, and that might have been that might might have been at the top of the list of, of the weird games. Kentucky bringing Liam Cohen back. We'll see where the Wildcat offense is under quarterback and coordinator change at that point. And then South Carolina, another game that that on paper feels very competitive, and and they catch Carolina before that November spell where Shane Beamer's teams seem to just flip a switch and. Played a level we didn't even know they could play at. So very interesting sequencing of events there in October. Yeah, Missouri had six games last year decided by a touchdown or less. So, um, yeah, and they lost um, several of those games. So I think that was, uh, yeah, that was just an interesting kind of, and that's what I mean. Like, I feel like they're going to be with a chance to play these teams close. And so that's why I think when you look at the schedule, I mean, as you mentioned, you've got kind of that that set up. The Vanderbilt game is just always important. Um, it's not ideal, as I mentioned earlier, having LSU on the schedule from the West because I think LSU's got a great chance to repeat as the SEC West champion. Of course, Alabama will be in the mix. Who knows? Uh, A&M could be there too, and and who knows? Maybe if any of those other teams kind of pop up there into the conversation. But I guess the bright side, right, is at least you get this one in Columbia. So um, that's at least a somewhat as i said i mean who knows right maybe it's the lsu game maybe it's the kansas state game maybe it's the tennessee game missouri gets a, a top tier team that comes into the you know their, their own stadium and and has a chance to pull off the upset kind of like they did last year against georgia who knows maybe that's a possibility kentucky um you know like you mentioned kind of a weird game last season but i just think that's tougher now going to lexington to win that game with kind of uh, a new look offense uh, or with some new look guys lead, leading the way on that offense for kentucky and then South Carolina, um, you know, the Gamecocks, I would expect to continue that momentum, um, you know, with Spencer Rattler's back and can they continue to build off of what they did towards the end of last season. So not an easy stretch by any means as you kind of head into that part of the schedule. Okay, last four interesting. Uh, at Georgia, you would be tempted to say – Blow out and, and look, George, it, it Georgia might have a little revenge be, on the mind the way they played last season. Yeah, I mean, I but Missouri could have won that game a year ago in, in Columbia, and, and and maybe that was on Georgia not not showing up and being Georgia. But let, let's give the Tigers some credit here. They were, I think, the closest team to beating Georgia a year <laughs> ago. Should have beat Georgia. Uh, let's be honest; like <laughs> they should have won that game. Um, you know, one play basically swings the momentum yeah. of that game and. It's just so wild to think back on. But who knows? I You, you never know. Maybe Missouri is one of those teams that's just going to play Georgia tight. But my expectation is going to Athens. Um, the dogs probably won't forget how they played last season in Columbia. So, Well, Missouri may not forget Tennessee. Uh, what, what did Josh mm -hmm. Heupel's first two teams have put, what, like 214 points on them in the last two games? I mean, it's been ugly. Mm, yeah. Well, this offense is going to have some pieces to replace. So maybe, maybe that's something. I, look. I know you haven't kind of laid out the entire this back part of the schedule yet, but I think Missouri's defense, right? And we'll talk about Missouri's defense yeah. this summer. That's going to be the key to this whole schedule. Like, because I do think yeah. it's like, think about how much that kept them in games last year. And if they can just kind of build off of that, um, I mean, again, I think Missouri's, there's a lot of possibilities with the schedule, even as, as difficult as it seems on paper. Okay. The last two, I think are interesting. I mean, they're interesting anyway, but I think they're very interesting based on sequencing. Um, 
Florida team that we're not particularly high on, that fan base has no patience for coaches. I, I don't think they're going to like and, – and, and this is a lot of projecting, okay? I, I don't think if Florida's not going well at that point in the season, they're going to fire Billy Napier because that is a, a culture overhaul down there in Gainesville that needed to be done. And he's doing – I think he's the right guy. But it, it's always interesting to see a team – where fans' expectations are not met, and in the SEC where everybody other than, than maybe Vanderbilt, it's a pressure cooker, you, you see the wheels fall off teams. And so I would rather have Florida, I think, later than sooner, given all those hypotheticals I threw up. No, look, Florida may overachieve, and, and it may not be like that at all. But I'm always circling games in my head like, okay, where is a place where expectations might be a little bit out of whack and fan base might be a little upset with the coach. Not, not, not that that SEC. ever happens in this league. Not in the SEC, no way. <laughs> Never. <laughs> looking at you, Auburn. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's one that you can you can say, okay, what's that dynamic with Florida going to look like going into what should be a you know reasonably evenly matched game, uh, probably edge to Missouri and Columbia. Then you got at Arkansas, uh, and that's another one. I, I like the job Sam Pittman's done, but – uh, we have, if you haven't noticed, a few Razorback fans that watch our channel, and there seems to be some disgruntlement and some uh, expectations that he needs to really make hay, which is always tough to do in the SEC West. So I look at those last two games, and I want to know what's going on with those other two programs. Um, because if I do, I think I have a better idea how Missouri matches up. Think about this. We're going to enter November 18th, perhaps. I've got Florida and Arkansas as sort of the two games that could define Missouri's season. But if you really think about it as a whole, those three teams, like think about how much <laughs> those could be defining games for all three programs, yeah. um, depending yeah. on where they are. And then the, all three coaches, depending on where their teams are at that point in the season. So I, I just think these two are so fascinating. Again, we can look at the LSU at Kentucky, Georgia, Tennessee, Kansas State, so forth. Those are the ranked teams. But I think these two games are the one that could set off like that domino effect, depending mm -hmm. on what happens in these two games for any of the three programs involved. So I, I do believe those are probably going to be sort of the defining games of the season. Like I said, maybe not just for Missouri, maybe for Florida, maybe for Arkansas um, and I think that could decide a lot uh, for Missouri in terms of, again, can they get to a bowl game? Are they going to be six and six again? Are they going to be better than that? Um, these feel like two games that could really tell us a lot about that. But like I said, it's, it's hard to, I don't even know what, and we'll do our game by game predictions in another video here in a couple of weeks, but I don't know what, I can't even tell you what record I would have Missouri at right now heading into those final two games. And I just think that's why there's so much sort of, flexibility in terms of what you could perceive these three teams being at this point in the season. Um, and I think that's what it all comes down to. So I think just finishing it off with that, can Missouri play that potential spoiler against one of the, what, five ranked teams they have on their schedule right now? Um, I think those are the biggest questions heading into the season. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because Arkansas and Florida not – the only two teams in that situation where the, the the coaching temperature could get a little dicey. Missouri, I, and I don't think Eli Drinkwitz, Eli Drinkwitz has done a bad job, but one way to antagonize a fan base is to go six and six every year. Um, and, and look, I, I think he's again, I think he's done a decent job. But if they're not winning seven or eight games by the end of the season, fans are probably going to be unhappy. So you, you make a good point that it's going to be maybe multiple programs potentially in that spot. Um, so who knows? It could, could be a situation where you got coaching change on the on the mind at that point. Can Dennis Gates coach football? You know, Dennis Gates, um, I've heard he's got a great background in football. Um, I, I don't I mean, I've already I've already pushed him for one Missouri job. I don't know that I can do that for another just yet, but um you never know. It depends on how well um, you know, the summer goes for basketball. If if they're looking pretty good ahead of September, you just never know. Maybe Maybe Eli Drinkwitz brings him out there for a little, a little, you know, assistant work, perhaps. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, Dennis Gates can do everything. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Always comes back to Dennis Gates. All right, Blake. Um, we got many more schedule previews to come up. We're just getting started with these. Best way to get them, hit the subscribe button, enable your notifications, and hit the like button if you would, please. It helps us get noticed, helps us get sponsors, all those good things that 
to help us get paid. In any case, he is Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. Thanks for watching us here at Southeastern 14. We'll see you again soon with another SEC football schedule.